Now, supermodels famously used to claim they wouldn't get out of bed for less than £10,000. But what is the cost of looking fabulous? It was Kate Moss who said she lived by the mantra, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. Well, tissue paper certainly doesn't taste good or do any good for one's health, but a new book by the former Vogue Australia editor Kirsty Clements says that is what models resort to eating to stay thin. It's brought the fashion industry into the spotlight again over how it treats the young people that show off its clothes. Let's discuss uh, if the fashion world is still stuck in size zero. I'm joined by Natasha Devon, a former fashion model and uh, writer for Body Gossip, and uh, Amber Jane Bouchard, fashion expert and historian. Thank you both very much indeed. Uh, uh, Natasha, I mean, a lot of us here just couldn't believe that bottles were eating tissue paper, but you say it's been going on for years. It has, yeah. I was um, what's called a straight size model uh, more than a decade ago. In fact, in fact, the pictures that you've been showing in the trail were from my plus size modeling career, which was much later and I was a lot bigger. But um, I, I did used to feel the pressure to, to stay very, very slender, as we all did. We were very young, we were very impressionable. And we were in an industry where certain behaviors, which were very, very unhealthy, were totally normalized. So um, when you are 15, 16 years old and suddenly you're plunged into a world in which everybody is doing certain things you copy because that's what everybody's doing um, and so eating tissue paper was was just one of the things we did and that was a decade ago so but, 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 I mean just just describe what that was like it must have been revolting and what were the consequences of that? I mean once you managed to digest it you know it must be must have been awful wasn't it it was but again because we talked about it so much we we normalized it for each other i mean it is it's absolutely excruciating i wouldn't recommend it to anybody as as a diet tip if you like um, but that's what we thought we had to do and the problem was of course that you know less than one percent of the global population naturally has the the figure of your average supermodel um, and most of us didn't about 90 percent of us didn't naturally look like that so we had to take more and more drastic measures to stay that uh, and Jane, I thought we'd, we'd got over this in the fashion industry. You know, we talked about hair and chic, you know, there have been various initiatives for girls not to be used under the age of 16 or who look ill, and yet it still seems to be going on. Mm. Well, the fashion industry keeps kind of reluctantly trying to regulate itself, I think. You get all of these initiatives from, you know, people like Anna Wintour saying we're not going to use girls under a certain BMI, we're not going to use girls under a certain age, and then you keep having these kind of moments where the kind of the curtain is drawn back to a certain extent, I think, and, and you do realise the full extent of what actually goes on. I think the fashion industry is trying to bow to public pressure, but it's, it kind of spirals, you know, like um, fashion designers will create samples in a certain size. Um, the, the magazines will then blame the samples. The samples will blame the magazines, will say, you know, they can't, you know, the, the magazines will then blame the models themselves. Well, just to, on that circular argument, who is to blame? Is it the designer or is it the agent? Is it the agent saying, listen, love, you're going to have to lose, well, you're going to have to lose a bit of weight if you're really, going to get this job? Yeah, it's kind of a fault of an industry, the industry as a whole, I think. You can't, there's no one sort of chain in the link that's specifically to blame. It's more of a sort of societal problem. It feeds into a lot of fears about the idea of um, women in, in, in public space, really, the idea of sexualizing very young girls. It also, you know, if you go the other way, people worry that it kind of um, somehow advocates obesity if you use women that are any bigger. It's a lot of different kind of public fears that these kind of arguments play into. Natasha, there have been other models who have been on drips because they haven't mm. eaten for two to three days. I mean, how common was that when you were, when you were on the road with, with, with models? I mean, was everyone doing this or were some people just naturally skinny who could get away with it? Presumably, metabolically, some people are. Metabolically, some people are. And I think also you have to bear in mind that models are getting younger and younger. It wasn't unusual for people of age 14 to be on the catwalk when you do, when you're younger, have a naturally faster metabolism. But I always felt, even in those days, that we had lost sight of the fact that clothes are there to look good on your body, not the, the other way around. And uh, what we advocate at Body Gossip is this thing called the spectrum of beauty. You know, there are some people who are naturally slender. There are some people who are naturally bigger. What if they were both on the catwalk together? Why do we have to choose? But, but that campaign has been run successfully, hasn't it, in the last few years? Have, it has, having been, absolutely, but you yeah. know, you describe yourself now as well, a plus, a plus, yeah, a, a plus yeah. size model. But, but in a way, why is society sort of even discussing you as a plus size model? Because you're just a, you know, you're, you're a beautiful woman, aren't you? Uh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of you know how heavy you are. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always think that that models should be described as minus size people, uh, rather than normal size people being described as plus size models. But uh, right. yeah, you know, well, the, the language brain -wise is helpful. Or physically. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no, but what, what, what do you think? 
Uh, well, no, I completely agree. A lot of the work I do, I work as a lecturer at London College of Fashion and a lot of the classes I teach involve encouraging ideas of diversity within the fashion media, within sort of society in general, because it's a problem not just with size. Size tends to be the most sort of visible issue, but it's a problem with age, it's a problem with race, all of these issues, uh, you know, a lot of people are kind of left out of the fashion industry for factors that are really beyond their control. But I suppose you've got to face facts, haven't you? I mean, it is such a lookist thing. It's there to sell clothes, it's there to sell magazines, it's there to sell products as well. And, and until you change that stereotypical view of what people think is well, they've, happening, they've but, but, but been, they're being fed that, I suppose. But well. there have also been studies done recently in the USA and in Australia that show people are actually happier to buy products from models that they view as more similar to themselves. Right. If there's greater diversity, I think you could actually have a more successful and, brand. And do you think, Natasha, that, you know, I think a child has been used recently with Down syndrome um, yeah. Yeah, for a supermarket. Uh, and, and that has, had, in a flash, has just broken away all those sort of perhaps perceptions about d disability, hasn't it? Absolutely, and fashion needs to take a leap of faith, I think, because people will continue to consume if they use fashion as something to express their indiv individuality in order to be unique. It, fashion needs to be taken back to a place of fun. And uh, what you know, we always say at Body Gossip, we're not advocating not having any interest in how you look, but you need to, to um, sort of confine it to where it belongs in your head. Um, and so I think if people were encouraged to feel more confident and not to feel like they were inadequate, then none of these industries are going to collapse, and I think fashion needs to realise that. Mm. Okay. Well, I think the same can apply to TV and uh, on some, <laughs> in some areas as well, but that's, a, that's another whole issue. <laughs> Natasha and Virginia, thank you very thank much you. indeed uh, for coming on. Uh, stay with us, and we'll be.